Hello guys, this is Paul McCorder from TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with lesson number 10 in our Arduino tu tutorial series on developing a non-axis inertial measurement system. What we're going to do today is we're going to show you how to add to our system the ability to have a tilt compensated compass. So a compass that will show us our heading or our yaw whether it's flat or whether it's tilted. This will be adding on to the work that we did earlier. So what I need you to do is pull yourself a nice big mug of iced coffee. I need you to get your gear out, which for those of you who are playing along at home, we are using the most excellent Adafruit BNO055 sensor connected to an Arduino Nano. If you don't have your gear yet, look down in the description. We give you links that will allow you to get the exact same components that we are using, and that really helps in, in a big project like this. What I also need you to do is I need you to get the code that we left off with in lesson number nine because each lesson we're building onto this code and if you're just now joining us you can go to www.toptechboy.com I need you to search on non-axis IMU lesson number nine and then you can come down here and grab the code that we have so far now where we left off in this crazy project I think I will come here and show you uh, this uh, this is a this is a good view yeah this is probably a probably a better view here. Where we left off in this project is that we had used some, uh, we had used the three accelerometers and we had used the three gyros to come up with an approximation for the system pitch and the system roll. And the neat thing is we applied some filtering. We did a complementary filter where we ended up with something that is both very responsive and very stable. And so if you look at this, give you a quick demonstration, we can measure system roll. Let me scoot back a little bit here so you can see that a little better. So we can look at pitch, nose up, nose down. Do you see how responsive that is? Nose down. I can roll right, back to flat, roll left, and you see that it is very snappy, the, the, the signal responds very quickly, but also it's pretty immune to vibration. So by using that complementary filter, I have a pretty good approximation for pitch and roll for kind of like low angles, right? We didn't go up to 90 degrees for angles below 45, pretty good approximation. But at this point, we do not have any measurement of the heading. Let me get your focus back here. Focus, you aggravating thing. Let me see here. Sometimes this just really causes me trouble. There, it's going to get it. Okay. Now, where were we? We were here looking at pitch and roll. The problem is, is that if you think about the gravitational vector that is coming straight down, that gravitational vector is not impacted if we're simply rotating about that axis, which, which is what we're doing with yaw or heading, which means that we really, from the accelerometers and the gyros, we cannot get that yaw. To get that yaw, we're going to have to turn on our gyros. And if you think about it, the Earth, besides having a gravitational vector that is pointing straight down, there is also a magnetic vector that is coming from the magnetic north, okay? And therefore, with turning on the magnetometers, we should be able to see that magnetic vector. Now, what I want you to think is, is that if this direction is north, moving this way is north, and that, and that magnetic vector is coming from the north, if I am oriented with the x-axis towards the north, that x-magnetometer is going to see that entire magnetic vector. So that x-value is going to be at a maximum to where the y-value is not going to see any of it, so that will be at a minimum. 
Similarly, if I turn it 90 degrees, in this case, the x-axis is going to see none of that magnetic vector, and the y is going to see all of it. So if we do a little trigonometry, we should be able to figure out what that, we should be able to figure out what that angle is. And so let me just kind of do some really rough trigonometry, and it's going to be kind of initially for the simple two-dimensional case. And so I need to go to a nice overhead view here and move this out of the way. And so let's think about you're looking down on the accelerometer, or you're looking down on the uh, non-axis sensor, and I have got this Y magnetometer, and then I have this X magnetometer. Okay, I'm pointing north, so the magnetic vector is coming in like this. And that X magnetometer is going to see the whole thing. The Y magnetometer is not going to see anything. Now let's imagine that we rotate along that XY plane. We rotate that magnetic vector is still coming directly from north, but we have rotated by some angle psi. Okay, we have rotated our sensor by some angle psi. Well, now we have to take this vector and we have to break it up into a component along the still, this is the X magnetometer and this is the Y magnetometer that's been rotated. So I want that component that is orthogonal, that Y value, and then I want the X value, okay? So this is what the X magnetometer is going to see, and this is what the Y magnetometer is going to see. But what I really want is I can measure this on the Y magnetometer. I can measure this on the X magnetometer, but what I really want is Psi. Well, what would Psi be? We have a triangle. How do we find Psi? Well, do you remember Sokotoa? Toa, tangent, the tangent of this angle is the opposite over the adjacent. So what I know is I know that the tangent of psi is equal to the opposite, which is the y magnetometer over the x magnetometer. All right, so now I know tan of psi. How would I find psi? Psi is equal to the tan inverse of the Y magnetometer value over the X magnetometer value. Now what I hope you can see very clearly here, what I hope you can see very clearly is, is that this is only going to work for the case where you are flat the case where you are flat and you are rotating because then you are able to do that tangent inverse because everything is in the same plane. If we pitch or if we roll or if we pitch and roll, you have to do some three-dimensional trigonometry. Now, I can't draw the three-dimensional trigonometry, so I'm going to do just the case that you can understand, which is this, and then I'll give you the result for the three-dimensional case that will be the tilt compensation, but I can't draw it. Okay, so let's just jump in now and let's see if we can get this, uh, let's see if we can get this simple case to work in our code. Again, I need you to start where you left off in lesson number nine. And I will try to bring this in and I will try to continue to show this equation. <clears throat> and what we want to do is we want to uh, code up this equation. So I am starting with where you left off in lesson number nine and I probably should start by uh, I probably should start by kind of thinking about some variables uh, you know start by defining some of the variables that we're going to need in this thing and uh, come up to the top okay and I think that you guys can probably uh, probably see this. So theta is what we were calling like our pitch and phi was kind of like our roll. Okay. 
And then what we are going to need now is we are going to need a variable for this y magnetometer va value and this x magnetometer value. So we should probably go ahead and declare those. So float xm will be our value coming off the x magnetometer and float ym is the value coming off of our y uh, magnetometer. And then this angle, this yaw angle or this heading angle, psi. You are learning your Greek alphabet. So psi, float, psi. Okay, so I think those are going to be the three main variables that we are going to need. Okay, now we are going to be making a uh, we are going to be making a magnetometer measurement now. So we come down to the part of the code in our void loop. We do all the bookkeeping. We get everything set up, and it's this IMU colon colon vector command where we're actually going out to the BNO fifty five uh, oh, oh, BNO zero fifty five sensor and pulling data off of it. In this first command, we pulled off the accelerometer vector, and we put that in the parameter ACC. Then in this command, we pulled off the gyro data, and uh, those are the rotational velocities around the three axes, and we put that in the name GYR. Well, now we need to turn on the magnetometers and get them, so it's going to be the same thing we are talking to an IMU. We want a vector with three elements. <clears throat> this is just standard stuff in this uh, Adafruit library. But what we got to do now is what do we want to put it in? Where do we want to bring this data into? We'll put it in mag, M-A-G. We had named our magnetometer my IMU. So we're talking to that. Now we are going to get vector. We're going to get the vector from our ADA fruit underscore B N O zero fifty five colon colon. And you can see in our first command, we pulled the vector accelerometer, then the vector gyroscope. Can you guess what this one is going to be? Vector underscore magnetometer. I sure hope I spelled that right. I should stop and look and make sure. That looks pretty good. Okay, so now I have pulled the magnetometer data. So now I come down and I do all the filtering and all the calculations and all the good stuff that we did earlier. But now what I want to do, I want to calculate psi, P-S-I. Okay, and what was psi? It was tan inverse. How do we do tan inverse from our earlier lessons? Well, it is A tan 2 and then it's numerator, comma, denominator. Well, what did we want the numerator to be? Y and the denominator X. And so we are going to have <coughs> Y from the magnetometer, X from the magnetometer. Now we got to think here that we, we've declared Y and X, but we haven't put a value into them yet because when we did this command we just pulled that vector into the name mag so we've got to now put that into these two variables and so what would we say we would say and I want to make sure that I'm doing things in the right order uh, we want to say that uh, x magnetometer is equal to simply this is going to be the uh, magnetometer value dot x that comes from that vector. And now y m is going to be equal to the magnetometer y from that IMU pull command that we gave up there. All right. This looks pretty good. Now we have a psi. We need to come down here and we need to print it. So we have printed all this other nonsense. Now this thing from the last lesson, this series of prints, right, the last one you put an L in and that kind of lumps it all together for the serial plotter. So this is no longer going to be the last one, so I need to take the print L in out. And now I've got to print serial dot print. I've got to put a delimiter in there to separate the data. We're using the comma as the delimiter. And now I'm going to serial dot 
print, and I am going to print Psi, P-S-I, and like that. And this one is now the last one in the packet, and so I will put L-N. Okay, we are going to compile this. I need everyone to hold their breath. Yes. Oh, denied. Ah, oh, I bet I know what I did. Look at that. You see, I said my IMU, uppercase. I had named that object my IMU, uppercase. The real problem, though, was that you guys did not hold your breath. So whoever it was that didn't hold your breath, I need you to hold your breath this time. Yes. Download. Download. Green, green, green. Yes, yes. Finish. Please. Please download. Please. Ah. Boom. At least I downloaded. I do not know if the answer is right or not, but at least we got it downloaded. So let's switch over here to our view. Okay. And now a couple of bookkeeping things that we need to do on the serial plotter. We just added a new channel, so I need to come down to the data format. And then instead of 15 channels, I now have 16. And now I come back to plot, and that 16th channel we need to name YAH. Okay, you could call it YAH or you could call it heading. All right, and I am just going to look at the YAH. Okay, and now I'm going to turn on that serial port. Now we'll try to show this now where you can see it. And so I am going to turn it on now by clicking open. Give it a second to come to life. Okay, and now it has come to life. And so it is showing a value of zero. And so now I'm going to rotate it. I'm not seeing anything barely seeing it moving denied not working okay why is it not working someone out there leave a comment down below why is it not working now this mistake I deliberately made now why did I deliberately make the mistake because I teach high school students I see them over and over and over one of the number one reasons that things do not work on problems like this is that you guys do not keep track of your units, okay? What are we plotting on the serial plotter? We are plotting in degrees. And what does the arc tangent function return? It returns radians. What do we need to do? If we're going to be plotting things in degrees, we need to convert to degrees. How do we do that? Well, if we're in radians, first thing we do is figure out what fraction of a circle do we have. Well, we have so many radians. How many radians in a circle? 2 pi. So we divide by <clears throat> 2 times 3.14. That's the fraction of the circle now times the new units, which is degrees. How many degrees in a circle? 360. So I multiply it by 360. Now I need to make sure that I turn the serial monitor off. Now we need to download this. Please hold your breath. I'm confident. I'm confident. I didn't do enough to mess up. I didn't do enough to mess up. This is going to work right there, right there. I am confident. Boom. Okay, now let's come over here, and this time I am actually going to come over and uh, let's get this so you can see it. Okay, I am going to make sure that this is calibrated, so I'm going to look at my accelerometer calibration channel. I'm going to look at my gyro calibration channel, magnetometer calibration, system calibration. I'm going to click those because since we're going to really start looking at this, we got to make sure that the thing is calibrated before we start looking at the data coming off of it. And now I'm going to click open to bring it back to life. Okay, hopefully it'll come back to life. Okay, so it looks like it is back to life. I am going to turn auto scale on, and you can see sitting there the orange, the gyro is already calibrated. The gyro is already calibrated. Now, if I just swing it around, uh, swing it around wildly, very quickly, the magnetometer becomes uh, the magnetometer becomes calibrated. It's up at a three, and now we have the old problem of the accelerometer, which we like to show at 45 degree angles, and you got to kind of hold it. So I go one Tanzania, two Tanzania, three Tanzania, 
1 Tanzania, 2 Tanzania, 3 Tanzania, show it the upside down, 1 Tanzania, 2 Tanzania, 3 Tanzania, the 45 upside down, 1 Tanzania, 2 Tanzania, 3 Tanzania, and then the 45 like this, 1 Tanzania, 2 Tanzania, 3 Tanzania, okay, and then like this, we'll see if we got it, just got a 1, let's try again, 1, 2, 3, 1, to, there it is. Okay, that took a little longer that time. Usually I get it the first time, but that took a little longer. Okay, we're going to turn those channels off and we're going to go down and just look at the yaw or the heading. So we have to remember to come down here to yaw. We're going to turn that on. Okay, so it looks like we've got live data. First thing I want to see is did I break something? Okay, I want to see if it it's, yeah, it's actually getting data, so that's good. And now this is pointing north, and it's reading about zero. That's good. And so now I am going to come to east, and it is reading a positive 90. That looks really good. Okay. I come back here. It reads zero. I come to west, and it's reading minus 90. And then if I come to south, it should read like 180. Okay, now right at south, if I go a little bit further, it's going to go from positive 180 to minus 180 because it's sort of like, you know, if you're going in the towards the east, that's positive all the way to 180. And if you're going in the westerly direction, that's a negative. And so then it kind of has to pop at the, you know, at the south. And so just a change of degree makes a big jump on the graph, but what you have to see is positive 180 and minus 180 on a unit circle are the same value. So look at this. This is really nice. What do we have? We have a compass, right? Using the magnetometer and using some simple trigonometry, we have a, a uh, compass. But what is the problem with this compass? The compass, I was telling you, this only works if you stay flat. What happens if I begin to like roll? I am not changing the heading, but it is interpreting this, this roll as a change in heading. Why is that? Because that sensor is no longer lined up with the XY plane. And I just did the geometry assuming that the sensor stayed in that XY plane and it is not in the XY plane now. And so the geometry never work, uh, no longer works. But never fear, I've done the geometry for the more complicated case. Now, I cannot take you through that geometry. I'm just going to show you the result. And why can I not take you through the geometry? Because you just can't draw in three dimensions. And so the bottom line is that for the out of XY plane, I have to project those vectors back onto the XY plane. And so my XM and YM have to now be compensated. And I'm going to do that. So we will turn this off. We will go back to the code view. And with a little luck, I will be able to do this without making a whole bunch of, of mistakes. But first of all, we are going to come up with the Y magnetometer value, which is going to be the compensated value this time. So what it is going to be is it is going to be the magnetometer in the Y value times the cosine of our phi value, which was our roll. Okay, but now I won't make the mistake this time, but if you were doing it by yourself, it would be very likely that you would. What units are we working in with phi and theta? We had converted those to degrees, and so now phi is in degrees. What is the problem with phi being in degrees? The problem is that the cosine function in Arduino wants radians. So we need to convert those numbers to radians. So this phi, which was our uh, which was our pitch, our new phi, our phi, we'll call it phi rad for phi in radians, is equal to our phi. Okay. And it's in degrees, and so what fraction of a circle do I have? I would have 5 divided by 360 would be the fraction of the circle times what? Times how many radians in a circle, which is 2. 
times 3.14. <coughs> I've overcome come my compulsive, obsessive compulsive tendency to want to put pi to 50 decimal points. We'll just use the good old standard 3.14. Okay, now same thing, theta, our pitch in radians, is going to be our theta value divided by 360 times 2 times 3.14, like that. Okay, now we've got to come down and we have to come up with this compensated magnetometer value. So we have the uh, magnetometer in the y direction times the cosine of phi, what? Phi in radians, which we just did. And then we are going to add to that the other component of the vector, which is going to be the mag z, because now we have some action going on in z, and then times sine of phi radians. Okay, so the compensated y magnetometer value is the y magnetometer value times the cosine of phi rad, which is projecting that for roll, and then plus mag z times the sine of the phi rad. So the, the y compensation really depends on that roll number. Now the z or the x magnetometer is just a little bit more complicated. You're going to have three terms. You're going to have the mag x times the cosine of the pitch, which is theta rad. Okay. And then you're going to have minus the mag y. mag dot y, okay, times the sine of phi rad times the phi rad times the sine of phi sine of phi rad sine of theta rad. Okay. To repeat, we are subtracting mag y sine of phi rad, sine of theta rad. So that's sine of roll, sine of pitch. Okay, and then we are going to add magnetometer.z magnetometer.z and then it is going to be times cosine of phi rad times sine of theta rad. And if I could draw in three dimension or if I had some three dimensional model I could show you how this actually makes sense but you're projecting those three dimensional vectors back onto that xy plane if that makes sense. Okay then we still have uh, the y, the psi then I'm still calculating psi is the tangent, arc tangent of y over m. Okay, so we're just projecting those vectors back onto the xy plane, and that should lead to success. I did a lot of crazy changes in here, so I do need you to hold your breath this time. Yes, denied. What is wrong? Oh, you know what? I put these in, but I didn't declare them, and you did not hold your breath, and that was the real problem. So we came up here, uh, theta and phi, we need to put in float <coughs> theta rad and float phi rad. That should do it. Hold your breath, please. It's going to work. Download, download. Yes, I am sure. Yes, download. I'm confident. I'm not even going to hold my breath. It's going to work this time, I'm sure. There, okay. It downloaded, but we don't know if it works or not. So what we need to do is we need to come over here to our serial plotter view. And on the serial plotter, I am going to go back and make sure that I calibrate this thing. <coughs> so I'm going to turn on accelerometer calibration, gyro calibration, magnetometer calibration, and system calibration. Now I'm going to open it to turn it on, see if I can give you a little bit clearer view here. Hopefully I can get focused. Okay, looks pretty good focused. Now 
just sitting there right the gyro has already calibrated we're going to come up here and just swing the thing around and then you see that very quickly the magnetometer calibrates now we will calibrate the uh, the uh, accelerometer and I'm not going to count because I think probably after a a point that probably begins to annoy you but just know that you have to give it that 45 degree angle for some period of time okay now we're going to show it upside down upside down with a pitch upside down with a roll and then it looks like we're calibrated that one went pretty easy that time now we're going to turn off the calibration channels and we are going to go to the yaw channel okay so we're going to turn that on first thing I want to see is I want to see if we broke something will this still just show me if I come down this is pointing north which looks like zero that looks pretty good I'm gonna come in the easterly direction so I'm gonna start going east and we come to positive 90 boom I'm gonna come back to north I am going to go to west and my cord is getting tangled up here west it looks like we have down like negative 90 that looks really good and then I'll come all the way south and I kinda have that minus 180 or 180 thing going on so what is the good news is the good news is we didn't break it when we added those other terms and so before I start saying does it work with pitch and roll does it just work at all so now the real test is going to see if I introduce a pitch do I still get the same y'all look at that huh yeah nose up nose down still pointing north but now that is one thing the other one what if I introduce roll look at that boom do you see that tilt compensated compass okay now the one thing yet to check is can I introduce a pitch and a roll and look at that now will it also work let's say if I point in the east direction okay it sees east east with pitch nose up east with pitch nose down okay let's go nose up and then have a roll and a roll boom tilt compensated compass okay again all the disclaimers what we are doing is a little simple desktop bench top demonstration for the purpose of impressing your girlfriend women will go crazy if they show you this that man he's the man for me because he knows how to create a tilt compensated uh, uh, compass but seriously don't put this on a drone if you're gonna do something on a drone that is a flying blender you've got to go in and do a lot more precision in your trigonometry because built in here are a lot of, of, of uh, assumptions and a lot of simplifications and so this is pretty good for angles up to 45 degrees but for a lot of the things that could happen in a real application <clears throat> like a self-driving car or a jet fighter or a Boeing aircraft you really have to go in and you really have to do the math for real I'm just giving you sort of a qualitative feel for how these things work but let's come in and let's turn on Phi and let's turn on Theta so now we have roll pitch and yaw turned on and so I'm gonna pitch nose up look at that nose up to about 45 degrees uh, I'm going I'm going to go from positive 60 to minus 60 expand the scale a little bit okay so I'm going to go nose up nose down nose further down roll left roll right okay and now I'm going to head east and uh, I guess I better turn the auto scale back on okay so now heading east with nose up nose down roll and roll so you can see that the heading goes to the right value but if you roll real quick you get a little bit of an error because it, you know because of the way that compensation is done if it changes very quickly you can get a roll you know what we could do is we could put like a low pass filter on that and we could filter that out to where we wouldn't quite have that problem but I think that you see that we've got something where we are approximating the Euler angles yeah okay pitch and roll 
Okay. And those are really looking very good. Now, the thing is, because when we were calculating the roll and the pitch, we put in that complementary filter. Do you also see that it's really pretty immune to uh, it's pretty immune to vibration because we did that complementary filter? Okay, guys, this is pretty exciting. We have this system that is approximating roll, pitch, and yaw from the raw numbers, the raw acceleration, gyro, and magnetometer vectors that are coming off of this BNO055. Is anybody playing along at home? Has anybody stuck through this through lesson number 10? Leave me a comment down below. If you like this, think about thumbs up in the video. Subscribe to the channel. If you subscribe to the channel, make sure that you hit the bell. Okay, and then also share this uh, with other people. I'm trying to figure out where we're going next. I'm uh, probably going to see if I can do like a little simple demo of, of kind of like something you could use or, you know, use this with. And so I'll probably try to do a little bit simple demo next. And then very soon what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking this data vector that we've created that right now we're just plotting. And we're going to be sending that to Visual Python. And then we're going to start trying to create these visualizations like I showed you in lesson number one. But you can't do the visualizations till you get the raw data. Now that we have the raw data, we can go in and try to do the visualizations. Hey, appreciate you guys tuning in. It's great encouragement for me when I get comments from you. Hope you'll leave some comments down below. This is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.